Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's another beautiful night in God's neighborhood. <laughs> and it's a good night to die, amen? You know, in this battle we're in right now, you need to carry a sword in one hand and a shovel in another. That's the way if you're not willing to fight, then kill yourself. Bury it right there. It's called deny yourself. So you need a shovel and a sword. And no, not we're gonna not, that's not the name of the teaching tonight, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Again, everybody knows in such a time and season that we are in right now, and there's such a battle going on. The battle is raging. It's getting stronger, but we're winning. See, that, that's the whole thing. We are winning no matter what. No matter what the news media says, the bail news they need to get bailed out. Hallelujah. Psalm 8, please. Hallelujah. Psalm 8. Thank you, Master. We are in need of endurance, big time, endurance. You know, persecutions from the enemy, regardless of where they're coming from, it's still from the enemy. Amen? One of the things we got to keep looking through is through the natural to the spiritual. No matter what's going on with you, no matter where your attack is from, no matter who says anything from you, you got to look past that person, past the things you're hearing, and look into the spirit and what's influencing that individual or whatever. That's where your fight is at, not with individuals. See, the enemy wants to keep you in a battle of the physical and not the spiritual. And once you bite the bait in the battle of the physical, you lose complete sight of the spiritual. And immediately what happens is then you're all about you. Then you fall into an emotional state of frustration, rejection, fear, woe is me, and every other foolish thing. It's all carnal. In Psalm 8, would you read it with me? Or speak it with me? Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, Lordy. Our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies. Whose enemies? His enemies. Amen? That you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Now, here he is, the psalmist David is saying, Lord, it's amazing to me that we're so messed up that you consider us. <laughs> I mean, talk about a dysfunctional family. Look at Adam and Eve. That's where it started from. Amen? Dysfunctional. They were perfect, and then the enemy came in and <laughs> made it dysfunctional. So we all came from a dysfunctional family, one way or another. Everybody's got stuff. But he's like, man, it's amazing to me that you consider man. It's amazing to me. All the stuff that we do, all the things that we said ab about you and against you, all the times we rejected you or even cursed you. But you still considered us. You still loved us unconditionally. I think that was one of the amazing things about what happened with me because I've when I sense God's love, I'm thinking, man, how can you love something like this? But his love is what changed me. Because I really never knew what love was about. I only knew what lust was about. I knew what desire was about. And when you got what you desired, you loved it. But it was a temporary false fulfillment. 
And people are still looking for that now. Something they want for a, for, for a desire, to, for a fulfillment, but it's temporary. And then they get frustrated. Then they blame God. They didn't get it sometimes. Verse 5. Are you ready for this? For you have made him a little lower than the angels. Now that's pretty intense. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. He's talking about me and you. See, now he's looking through the eyes of God, not through the eyes of man. Because if he was looking through the eyes of God, man, we'd be all in trouble. Verse 6, you have made him to have what? Dominion over the works of your hands. Now, what are the works of his hands? Everything. Amen? Everything is the works of his hands. He said, listen, I not only consider you, I love you, I forgive you, but I've given you dominion and a power and authority to steward my creation. That's enough. That's all. We can go home now. I mean, <laughs> what more do we need to know? You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Hello. They're under our feet. There's too many people that are under the feet of the devil and haven't come out from it yet. Because, see, when you're in carnality, you're under his foot. When you're in the spirit, he's under your foot. All sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, that pass through the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Man, dominion over the works of his hands. Does everybody understand that? So you and I have authority over all things. Remember when he created Adam and Eve, he said, I've given you dominion and power. But then the enemy deceived him. You know, God never removed his dominion and power from Adam and Eve. The enemy moved it from their thoughts. Does everybody understand it? He still allowed them to have dominion and power, but they didn't use it because they were convinced that they lost it. They, can, they were convinced because of the judgment that was upon them to be removed from the hotel garden. And they were sent out to the forest, out into the wilderness. But God was still with them, wasn't he? He didn't forget them. He forgave them. He even wrapped them. He gave them new garments. And they still had dominion and power. But they really didn't know it. Because that's where the enemy plays in the thoughts. He doesn't want you to know who you are. Remember, the first thing he comes to steal is your what? Your new identity. And that's in Christ. Is everybody okay? Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. In verse 9, now the Lord called Jeremiah to be a prophet, a prophetic word during this time. How many of you know his body is a prophetic word? See, there's offices of prophet to the nations, but everybody has the spirit of prophecy in them. Amen? And what is the spirit of prophecy also is the testimony of Jesus Christ. In verse 9, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms. Is that dominion? Authority? Power? Is that anything different than me and you? No. To do what? To root out and to pull down. Is that what's happening right now? Man, you're seeing a lot of rooting out and pulling down. To destroy and to throw down. So there's going to be root out, pull down, destroy, and throw down before what? Before we can rebuild and plant. 
So I want you to grab hold of something very important because this is where we're at. Remember, we have dominion, right? Although many, you know, as a man thinks, so he is. So the enemy's been playing with people's mind. He's been stealing their identity of who they are. But even during this time and transition, because God was doing a transition then, he's doing a bigger transition now. This is with the nation. Now he's doing it with the world. Does everybody understand that? Again, he did this with a nation. Now he's doing this with the world. We are in a tremendous, huge transition. That's why there's the awakening and so forth. But what's he doing? He's throwing down. He's destroying. He's pulling down and he's rooting out destruction and corruption in the evil kingdom of Satan. Globally, what's he going to do? He's going to rebuild. He's going to be rebuilt. Why? Because that's why the kingdom of God is getting more and more taking over territory on the earth. What was the prayer? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's God's plan the whole time. Was to bring the kingdom of God to the earth. Amen? Is everybody okay? In verse 11, let's speak it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah... What do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an alum, uh, almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well. For I am ready to perform my word. Listen. This is what's so important because people, they hear but they don't see. See, as a man thinks, so he is. But as he sees, so it will be. See, sight is prophetic. That's why he would ask the prophets, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see? He's asking his children, what do you see? Why? Because the greatest desire of a father is that his children see what he sees. Amen? Verse 13. And the word of the Lord came to me the second time saying, what do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot, and it is facing away from the north. Then the Lord said to me, out of the north calamity shall break forth on all the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I am calling all the families of the kingdoms of the north, says the Lord. They shall come, and each one set his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. Now, I want you to know that the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem was a place of meeting. It was business. These were all places of business, too. They negotiated. They trade. They did all kinds of stuff. And the gates and the outskirts right there. He said, and, all, and at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem, against all its walls all around, and against all the cities of Judah, I will utter my judgments against them concerning all their wickedness, because they have forsaken me, burned incense to other gods, and worship the works of what? Their own hands. This is what you and I are seeing right now. That's what God's judgments are. Hey, listen, his judgment is also in the body. Therefore, prepare yourself, he said, and arise, and speak to them all that I command you. Do not be dismayed before their faces, lest I dismay you before them. For behold, I have made you this day a fortified city and an iron pillar and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against its princes and its priests, and against the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. Now that is the message to the body. That's for me and you. Amen? Amen. The anointing on his body of followers, that's what Jesus is doing. This is for them. To fight against the wickedness of all nations and regimes. For they're forsaking the Lord and worshiping their own hands. He's given me and you through prayer, through supplication, as warriors in third dimensional warriors, not only to warfare from an eternal point of view, and what is that for? To root out. To call down destructive fire. To pull down, destroy, throw down. <laughs> we must, we're on a demolition job first.
before we can rebuild. Amen? The old building's got to come down. The old way's got to come down. The old government's got to come down. The old billionaire, millionaire, and trillionaire's got to come down. The old media's got to come down. Everything's got to come down. Listen, the Vatican's already been taken down. People don't know it yet. The Federal Reserve's already been taken down. The British palace and the king and queen have already been taken down. All of these, many places have been taken down already, but you're not going to hear it through the media. Many places are boarded up already, and people don't even know it. Things are about to explode tremendously in such a change and transition. Again, we are entering a, new, a whole new world where, where Christ is going to reign for a period of time. In Jeremiah 31, in verse 27. Hallelujah. I heard that there was a mask burning party somewhere. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. I think all oh, everybody ought to start throwing their mask in a big bonfire. <laughs> we ought to be mask busters. Verse 27. Let's speak, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and the seed of beast. And it shall come to pass that as I have watched over them to pluck up, to break down, to throw down, to destroy, and to afflict, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. Hallelujah. In those days they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man who eats the sour grapes, his teeth shall be set on edge. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the old covenant that I made with their fathers in that day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law on their minds and write in their hearts. You know what he's going to do? He's going to give us a wise heart. And that's what he's desiring right now, a wise heart. And I'll, put, and I'll write in their hearts and I'll be their God and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin, and I will remember no more. Now we know that as things begin to occur, things are manifesting, the name of Jesus is being spread. Remember, even when Paul was put into jail, it was an opportunity to declare Christ. So no matter what your circumstances, no matter where you're going, it's an opportunity to be a witness with a testimony. We have the testimony. What do the words say? They overcome by the word of their testimony. Amen? By the blood of Christ. And they didn't love their lives to the death. Why? Because they didn't care what happened to them. See, too many people still care what happens to them. They're still trying to set their future in this world. Let me tell you something. I don't have a future in this world. My future is home. I'm homebound. That's why I'm a homie. I'm going to make it home before I kill somebody. We're to build and to plant now. Amen? Any demon gets in the way? If I could shoot him, I would, but it doesn't work that way. The only thing you do is cast him to the pit. 1 Corinthians 3. Glory. But the Bible says that no weapon formed against us can prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us shall be what? Condemned. Hello. 
1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. Wise heart. Boy, we need a wise heart. That's a heart full of wisdom. You know, you can have a pure heart but not have a wise heart. You can have a clean heart and not a wise heart. It's the same thing when the person that got delivered and healed, right, and got set free from the demons. The problem was is they didn't get filled. See, wisdom comes from the presence of God and the filling of the Spirit and staying connected. See, without connection, you can't get it. So the enemy's trying to always bring disconnect. He's going to try to always build a bridge. He's going to try to build a wall. He's going to try to bring offense. He's going to try to bring bitterness. He's going to try to bring everything and anything he can to prevent you from being positioned as a builder. Because it's going to take a wise heart to build. In verse 9, is everybody there? Let's speak it. Do not lie to one another. Okay, let's get to the right place. <laughs> Well, that's a good start. Don't lie to one another, all right? It's not good. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. Is anybody there? Okay, let's speak it then. For we are God's what? Fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. Hmm. According to the grace, which is God's plan, of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and other builds on it, but let each one take heed how he builds on it. It's going to take some wisdom. For no other foundation can anyone lay that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with what? Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, entertainment, Facebook, Flashbook. <laughs> Each one's work will become what? Clear. For the day will declare it because it will be revealed by what? Fire. That's what we're going through right now. See, all foundations are being exposed in how it's being built. Your foundation, my foundation, everybody's foundation is being exposed in how it's built. See, many still are trying to build a foundation with their talents and abilities with their bank accounts. That's not how it's built. It's built, built by relationship with the anointing, Jesus Christ, the anointed one, and by the relationship of his presence and his breath. The Holy Spirit is the director of all building. Amen? Each one's work will be clear. Hallelujah. Now he says... If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a what? A reward. A reward. I want you to know that there's a reward for obedience. It's called increase. If anyone's work is burned, he shall suffer loss, but him, he himself will be saved yet so as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the, te the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Wow. Let no one deceive himself. If any, any among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. Why? He's saying wise from the world, wisdom from the world. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Why? Because we have dominion over all things. Amen? Wise builder establishing in, in his rebuilding, one of the things that must, we got to get a mindset of increase. You can't build without a mindset of increase. If you've got a mindset of limitations, you can't build. We must have a mindset of increase as we move forward into the new dimension and an advancement of the kingdom of Christ. A mind of increase is a mind of faith. It's not a mind of carnality. Remember, the enemy will do everything he can to bring blockage. 
to prevent us from building, to even have the mindset of increase. He loves to bring unworthiness and loneliness and all this other foolishness. Why? What does he do? He brings people to themselves. Woe is me. I'll grab your shovel. 1 Peter 5. Since you ain't going to use the sword, <laughs> you must well grab your shovel. Hallelujah. Have you not learned anything yet? Some people just like going through the cycles and getting run over by the same truck. I think they look at the time the truck's coming, then they jump in front of it. It's on route today. Yep. Hallelujah. Never even to check in with seeing in the truck. What's, you know, what's, what's it carrying? They never got that far. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. That means respect one another. And be clothed with humility. Let me tell you, if you don't respect a person, you're going to, you sow disrespect, you reap disrespect. Some people wonder why they're so being dull. Oh, I can't believe they're disrespecting me. Because you're the idiot that's dis disrespecting them. Hallelujah. People need to know how to submit to one another and respect. Treat one another. Even when the other person's a bonehead. God's greatest command is love one another. Didn't say you had to like one another. Love them. You might not like what they're doing, but you still got to love them. Hallelujah. Or else you're going to jump in front of that truck. Amen. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. In other words, more plan, more increase. Again, he will reward obedience with increase. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting your care upon him, for he cares for you. Here's the key. Be sober, alert, hello. Be vigilant, be consistent. Don't let things change you. Don't let people change your attitude and your mood. Don't let them... Listen, they... The world has got, got this, what, space stuff? Six feet or whatever it is? Social, whatever? You need to have that in the spirit realm. No demon. Some people you need to, listen, you need to get away from me because you carry too many demons. You're evil. Tell them. Hallelujah. Be sober. Alert and be vigilant, consistent. Stop letting things alter you. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour by releasing emotional, demonic influence. It says, resist him steadfast in the faith, and that's your connection. What's he trying to do? Disconnect you. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, so cut the garbage out and always saying, it's only me. It's not only you. Amen? Everybody goes through it. It's how they handle it. The same attack is on every person. You're not special. Hallelujah. But may the God of all grace, of all the highest plan, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you suffered a while. In other words, you've been challenged. You've been examined. You've been tried. You've been tested to see if you're genuine. Why? Because God's trying to get something to you, but he knows if you can't pass the test, whatever he brings to you gets stolen. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Resist them steadfast, because even after you're going to go through the sufferings. Now listen, those wonderful sufferings. It says, a while. 
It's what's it going to do? It's going to perfect you. It's going to establish you. It's going to strengthen you. It's going to settle you. What's it going to do? You know, <laughs> again, we must become more alert, more consistent, unchanging, steadfast, because the enemy's going to come to resist the, <laughs> the tearing down of your position. He's going to come and tear down everything that you built, that God built through you. He's going to try to destroy your foundation. Remember, he does not want you to be in position with power and dominion for the building and increase of the kingdom of Christ on earth. He has a great plan. There's a great plan, there's a great awakening, and there's a great building getting ready to happen. The world calls it infrastructure. Amen? This is an eternal thing, not temporary. God is building and preparing. Why? He's building all kinds of places. People don't realize. Listen, the way things are, you think, why are they still building all of these places? I mean, it's all because many people are going to get rescued. God is establishing storehouses, warehouses, to distribution centers. The wealth of the wicked is coming to the righteous, to those who God has trusted to handle it. Not to those who can't handle it. Amen? But they can help. Hallelujah. There's a great greatness of his power and his glory and his love, and he wants to use it through us, but there's got to be a purification. Amen? Why? We've got to have a wise heart, not just a pure heart. There's got to be a wise heart. It's going to settle you so that we get a mind of increase that's looking beyond our temporary, that's looking beyond our, temp our, our limitations, that's breaking down the enemy's walls of bondage, the blockage that he builds up. Remember, we're preparing the way and the return of the Lord and the position of his government. Increase is a reward of obedience. A mind of increase is a mind of faith. The enemy will attempt to block, to rebuild by blocking the mind and flooding with emotional deception and weaknesses. I'm going to say that again. He loves to flood the mind with emotional deception and weaknesses. Why? Because it causes an individual, causes the enemy to block what God is trying to do. Why? Because what does the word say? What's about fear? Amen? God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but what? Love, power, and a sound mind. Once that emotional fear comes in, everything else gets nullified. Ephesians 6. Hallelujah. Wise heart. Ephesians 6.10. What does it say? Finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Strong in the Lord and the power. Listen, if you're not strong in the Lord and the power of his might, you're going you're gonna to get run over. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Again, being strong in the power of his might. That means that there's got to be a connection, constant connection. Connect. Listen, you need to know the Holy Spirit more than you ever have. We need to know his unction and his leading. And we need to wait when you don't know what to do. Anxiousness will destroy you. Assumption will kill you. Second Timothy two. Second 
2 Timothy 2, verse 1. Everybody there? Let's speak it. You therefore, my son, be strong in the what? Grace. We just talked about being strong in the presence and the power of God, which is the anointing. Now be strong in the plan. Listen. If you're not able to see through, you can't be strong in the plan. Does everybody get it? If you're so busy building around you, you can't see forward. Again, this is where an individual is really not denying themselves. They're too busy building themselves. I'm not talking about building the foundation. The Lord's the one that builds the foundation. We just cooperate with him. But we can get so busy taking care of all carnal things. Amen? Be strong in the plan of Christ to rebuild with an attitude and a mind of increase as a good soldier and a good builder. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men and women who are able to teach others. Now, are you going to be able to receive from someone who is not walking in the character of Christ, even though they proclaim to be a Christian? No way. You therefore must endure Hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Does everybody get that? He says, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That means deny yourself. He may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Be strong in the plan of Christ to rebuild with an attitude and mind of increase as a good soldier and good builder. Only your faith and trust in Christ can get you through the attacks of offense fear, rejection, unworthiness, and emotional deception to overcome and break down the enemy's blockages. It's our responsibility to break them down. You know, when you call on the name of the Lord, Lord, please help me. He's going to always direct you. He always directs you. He gives you a plan of escape. He shows you what to do. In Exodus 31, Now, does everybody understand why all of this chaos and all of this destruction is going on? Remember, God uses his enemies to fulfill his plans. They don't know it. He just outwits them all. Go ahead, do this. Go ahead, do that. Good. You're destroying it. Okay, I'm going to rebuild it anyway. So I'm going to place my kingdom here. I'm going to place. Oh, you're just exposing yourself. Keep going on TV and talking like you're talking. You'll be arrested soon for perjury, for treason. You can boast all you want. See, he's setting everybody up. All these people are being exposed. And the people in the kingdom are being exposed. Remember, he's separating the tares from the wheat, the goats from the sheep. In Exodus 31 and verse 1, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, and the son of Uri, and the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the what? Spirit of God. In what? Wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of what? Workmanship. To what? To build. See, that's what he's doing now. That's why it's so important to stay filled with the Spirit. That's why the Word says forsake not to assemble so you and I can stay refreshed and filled. Why? Because he's giving us the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding. He's giving us the discernment. Listen, a wise heart is a discerning heart. See, we're not relying on our talents anymore. Because when people rely on their own talents, then they worship the works of their hands. Well, these are my abilities. No, they're not your abilities. They're his abilities. He's given us it all. It's the Lord that's granted everything. So in this rebuilding, he's going to pour out more of a spirit where people are going to get plans. They're going to know exactly what they're doing. But the first thing he's trying to do is get us through the purification stages 
so that not only we have a pure heart, a clean heart, but a wise heart. Because he can't trust someone that doesn't know how to lean on the Holy Spirit, wait on the Holy Spirit, and trust the Holy Spirit. Amen? Can you trust someone that doesn't trust you? Heck no. Hallelujah. Wisdom and understanding to build by the mind, and he's going to give it to the mind of increase. It's a wise heart directed by the Holy Spirit. James chapter 3. I'm actually excited. I want to see more destruction. I want to see more chaos. Yeah. Why? Because I know my dad's going to rebuild it all. So the more it happens, the quicker it happens. Hallelujah. I think it's quite amazing that he's going to use the wicked to do this, and then he's going to arrest them. Think about that. Why? Because they were willing to yield to the enemy, the voice of the stranger. The word says something about, do not touch my anointed. Don't touch my anointed. People don't realize that Trump's been anointed by God. They are in trouble and don't even know it. James 3, glory. Everybody there? Verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct. By what? Character conduct. Christ conduct. Christ love. That his works are done in what? Meekness. Not meanness. Meekness. Of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, all those self-seekers, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. It's demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So we need to be peacemakers. Amen. A wise heart is a discerning heart, able to separate wisdom from the enemy and wisdom from God. In Proverbs 16. What does wisdom do? Tells you what to do. What's understanding do? Tell you how to do it. And wisdom and understanding together will bring what? Discernment. Proverbs 16. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 16. 16, 16. Is everybody there? Anybody there? Okay, good. Let's speak it. How much better to get wisdom than what? Gold. Do you know how many people are chasing gold and wisdom these days? Many. Many. Oh, you need to buy gold now. It's going up. So when you go out and buy the gold with no wisdom, you're going to lose it anyways. How much better to get wisdom than gold? And to get understanding is to be chosen rather than what? Silver. Oh, yeah, silver. Get all the silver you can. Sleep on it. It does not give you wisdom. The highway, the upright, is to depart from, depart from what? Evil. He who keeps his way preserves his soul. Pride goes before Destruction and a holy spirit before a fall. Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He who heeds the word wisely will find good. And whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. 
The wise in heart will be called prudent. And sweetness of the lips increases learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life to him who has it, but the correction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teaches his what? His mouth. Oh, snap it. The heart of the wise controls his tongue and adds learning to its lips. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the what? Bones. Why? Because as a man speaks, he eats. And what he eats, he becomes. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. There is a way that seems right in the man, <laughs> but its end is the way of death. Hallelujah. Wisdom and understanding will bring discernment. And again, a wise heart is a discerning heart. Third John. Third John. Verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. Prosper is associated with increase. In all things and be in health just as your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, and so forth, prosper. In other words, they advance in the image and likeness and character of Christ. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Again, to prosper is to increase. So that's going to take a divine, maintaining a divine connection. This is going to help you overthrow the enemy's plan. In First Thessalonians chapter 4. To prosper is to increase. Increase comes by obedience. You know, when a person is in obedience, they usually carry joy. And the Word says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So then they have strength. First Thessalonians 4 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ that you should abound more and more. In other words, increase. Just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. So to walk and to please God is going to cause what? Increase because it's obedience. It's a reward. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, your separation, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? To what? Holiness. Sanctification. Some people, it's, sanctification is also called fasting. What are you fasting from? Things that are unclean? Things from the world? And God will bring you into a deeper place sometimes. He'll ask you to fast something. And it's just an area, listen, fasting is an area of Bringing character and discipline and submitting in obedience. Some people eat so, kind, so many kinds of crazy foods out there that it messes with their minds and they can't hear. Because certain foods will dull you. Eat enough Twinkies, you ain't hearing nothing. You're going to be buzzing all day long. 
You hear every frequency but the voice of God. Hallelujah. Sanctification is fasting to assist the dissolving of the human nature and all its weaknesses and stubborn hearts. Fasting. You know, September 28th will be the 90 days. I encourage everyone, ask the Lord what he's asking you to fast on day. It's a day of atonement. The Jews fast the whole day. Ask the Lord what he's asking you to fast from. Besides yourself. Hallelujah. Proverbs 4. See, but the Word tells us that the law of the Spirit of life is to fast from yourself. That's what he says. Deny yourself means fast from yourself. Amen. Proverbs 4, starting at verse 1. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my word or my law. When I was my father's son, tender and lonely, and only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Hmm. Keep my commands and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, and do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she'll keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Say it again. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, which is God's plan. Put it in your mind. A crown of glory she will deliver to you. Get wisdom and get understanding. You need to ask for that every single day. Lord, grant me more wisdom and knowledge and understanding, discernment, strength, and boldness every day. Philippians 4, and we'll close here. A wise heart is essential. Why? Because a wise heart is one that's going to build. A corrupted heart will come against God's building. Amen. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is any thing praiseworthy meditate on these things now they'll set your mind on these things get off of yourself get off of your circumstances get off of your troubles and certainly kick out your emotions sheesh nine the things which you learned and received do them and heard and saw in me these what do don't try just do and the God of peace will be what? So he says, if you'll do this, you're going to receive peace. Why? Because what's the reward of obedience? Increase. Some people need more peace. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be what? Content. I know how to be abased, and, and I know how to abound. 
Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. But there's something vitally important. I can do all things through the anointing that strengthens me. I can do all things through the anointing that strengthens me. Now remember, the anointing brings wisdom, brings understanding. Amen. The anointing brings everything. The anointing is the carrier of everything. That's what establishes me in you to have dominion over everything. Without the anointing, we're not the most religious words. No presence, no power, and no dominion. Up and down. Up and down. Those are people that belong to those carnival things, you know. They go up and down on all these rides. They live an emotional life of roller coaster up and down it is very difficult for God to trust someone that lives in an emotional state who reacts emotionally all the time that's not a wise heart not at all amen God is raising up burning out things that are being torn down is to be rebuilt. We are now getting ready and preparing to build for the kingdom of God. Does everybody understand? You're going to need a what? Wise heart. Sanctification, justification, and glorification by the king for me and you. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray that everyone gets revelation of what you've released tonight. That you'd grant them wisdom and understanding and give them a wise heart. That you'd give them a discerning heart also. That they may be sensitive to your voice, to your unction, to your direction, to your counsel, correction, and conviction. That we all may turn from those things that are displeasing to you so that we live a life that's pleasing to you, obedient and a rewardful, increasing, prosperous life for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay blessed.